Hello and welcome to making and using a standard curve in Excel. In this video you're going to learn how to make and use standard curves to determine the amounts or concentrations of some substance that you are measuring indirectly. For example a protein concentration or maybe an enzyme activity. You will also learn several useful tools when you um, are using Excel to make your graphs. More specifically you're going to learn how to enter formulas use cell references, both relative and absolute, quickly copy formulas, make a scatter plot, create a best fit line, which is called a trend line in Excel, show the trend lines equation and our squared value, edit the plot for better visual, and finally calculate the unknown values using the trend line. Just a little bit about standard curves, if this is your first time using one. So generally for standard curves, you have some component, we'll call it A, and you're going to make a set of standards that you know the concentration or amounts of A in. You're then going to measure those standards by some indirect method. So for example, you might use a spectrophotometer. You will graph the measurements that you got with your spectrophotometer as a function of the amount or concentration of A. Finally, you're going to measure samples that you don't know how much A they have, and then you're going to use those measurements and your graph to estimate the concentration of A or the amount of A in your sample. So here I've already entered the data for our standard curve. I have the concentrations of A. I haven't included units because those are not important for this example. You of course will have units for your standards. I've then measured these standards using a spectrophotometer and I've done everything in duplicate so I have two absorbance values for each concentration. Now obviously I'm not going to plot both of these, I um, actually have done it in duplicate to increase the accuracy of my actual reading. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually calculate the mean of these, of these absorbance values. In Excel when we're going to put in a formula we start with an equal sign and we could just type in the actual formula for calculating an average, but instead we're going to use Excel's built-in formula. To find that we just start typing average and it will come up in the list of formulas. So if you've forgotten what the formula is that you want to use, you can always go to the formula ribbon and find it that way. And then we want to select the cells that we're going to use to calculate the average. So we're going to use this cell and this cell. So we just click and drag. And now you can see that we have a number that looks like it's probably the halfway point between 0.07 and 0.06. So the little green thing here is giving you a warning. That's Excel telling you that there was another set of numbers to the left of the ones that you just selected. And it wants to make sure that you haven't forgotten some of, to include some data. So we're fine. But this is exactly what we want. So the next thing we want to do is we now want to do the same calculation for all the cells below this for the rest of these concentrations. And again, we could re-enter that formula in each of these cells, but why would we do that? We would like the computer to do the work for us. So we want to drag this formula. To do that, we grab this little square, which is called a handlebar. See how my cursor changes when I go over it? I just click and drag, and now I have all of these calculations. Now what Excel's done here is because I used a reference to these two cells for this calculation, it's going to assume that I want to do the same reference to the adjacent cells for the other calculations. And I just like to double check and make sure that I dragged properly. And if you click on the cell and then go up here and click in what we call the formula bar, you can see that indeed in this very last cell, we've used B6 to, and C6 for the mean, so that's exactly what we want. You can get rid of these little green tags if they're bugging you, just highlight them, and then say ignore error. It doesn't change anything, it's just kind of irritating when they're there. So we're now ready to create our graph. The graph we want to use here is called a scatter plot. So we just click somewhere that we would like the graph to show up and change to our chart tab. We want the scatter plot. We don't want to join the lines in this particular plot because we're going to be adding a trend line and that's the only line we're really interested in. So we'll use mark scatter plot. So here Excel's created an empty box for me. Sometimes it will guess at what data should go into this chart, but frequently Excel guesses wrong and you just have to delete those and put yours in. 
So we right click, select data. So in this type of graph, you can add multiple series of data. So you, each time you want to add one, you actually have to click Add Series. It's going to be, we only have one series for this particular graph, but we still have to follow that process. So the first thing we're going to do is select our X values. And those are going to be our concentrations because the X has the control variable. Then we're going to select our Y values, which is going to be the means that we got for absorbance. And that's really all we have to do here. If I had a lot of series, I could actually type names in here. But I don't. I only have the one and I'm actually not going to use the series title for this graph. So here's our basic graph and you can see what it looks like to be a pretty linear relationship between our concentrations and the absorbance value, so that's promising. We're just going to clean this up a bit. I'm assuming you would want to use this graph in a lab report or at least in an assignment. You don't want it to look quite this unlabeled. So first thing I do is take out that series label. I don't need it because I only have one series. The second thing I do is take out those grid lines because they just add distraction to your graph, but Excel loves to put them in. The next thing I need is I need to label my axes and to do that I can go to chart layout and I'll select horizontal axes. doesn't matter which one you do first. So here we have on the bottom the concentration Actually, I like to do it this way, so these little symbols mean concentration. Let's say concentration of A, and of course here you would add your units. And then we also need a vertical axis. I like to rotate them this way. This is going to be your absorbance. And generally you would put your wavelength. So that it's obvious how those were measured. Okay, so you could add a chart title if you want. If you're using this in a lab report, of course, you wouldn't want a chart title. If you were handing in for an assignment, you might. Um, you would do that up here, but I'm not going to bother right now. So the next thing we want to do is find our best fit line. So click any one of your series points and then right click and select Add Trend Line. And you're going to get a little dialog boss is going to ask you what you want. Generally Excel defaults to linear which in this case is exactly what we're wanting. We can go to options. Now we're going to set the y-intercept to zero. We know it's zero because in this case we actually used a blank to zero the spectrophotometer. We want to see the equation because we're going to use it and we'd just like to display the r squared value and see how well how good a fit we have. This might be a little small in the video, but my R squared value is 0.99625. So a perfect fit would be one. You wouldn't expect to get one very often because that just doesn't happen. Anything for this type of a standard curve, you would expect at least 0.98 for an R squared value. Because you've controlled the concentrations, um, you should get pretty consistent measurements. And then we have our equation, y equals 0.0065x which we're going to use to calculate the concentrations of our unknowns. So here are the absorbance values I got for my unknown samples. I've already calculated the mean, and now I want to figure out the concentrations. So you have to think for a second before you do this. These are absorbance values. So basically what I have here is this value from this side of the graph. And I want to calculate the actual concentration which is on the x-axis. So when I look at my equation, I know the y, I need to figure out the x. So we just have to apply a little bit of algebra. We want to start with an equal sign again. This time we're going to start with the cell, which is the y. And then we're going to divide by this value here, 0 0.0065, and that will solve for x. And then we want to use that exact same formula for all these other cells. So we've calculated just that easily the concentration of all of the unknown amounts of A in all of these samples. Now there's another way to do this that's sometimes useful and that is here we've used what we call again the relative reference because we've referred to C21 
and then we've divided it by a constant value that we got from this graph, 0 0.0065. Sometimes it's useful to put your constant in a cell, like this, and then refer to it using an absolute reference. So instead of typing these in, I'm just going to delete these, we would say we want this cell, and we want to divide it by the information in this cell. But we want to keep D19 constant when we drag this down. So we have to put a dollar sign in front of D and in front of 19. So that's going to tell Excel that when I drag this formula, I want a relative reference here, but I'm going to divide by the value in that cell every single time. So you can see that we get the exact same values. Now the advantage of doing it this way, particularly when you have a whole lot of data, is that if you figured out later that you've made a mistake here and you wanted to change these numbers, you just type in your new value and all of these will update to the new concentrations. So in this situation it's not obviously that useful, but there's many other situations where typing things in as constants and using absolute references can really speed up modifications later on. So that's about it, except um, if you need to worry about significant figures or digits, if you're handing this in or doing, an ass doing some kind of a assignment, um, your marker might want to see you use significant figures. So here we have three significant figures, and you can see the first two cells are fine, but because we have two digits before the decimal, you have too many significant figures in the last three cells. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, so I'm just going to select them all. One way would be to just change the number of decimals in these cells. You'd want to do that. And we just reduce that by one. So that's a quick and dirty way, which often is enough for something small like this. The proper way to actually do to introduce significant figures, because Excel has no idea what these are, is to use scientific notation. Um, so here you have 7.8. Now you have two decimals or three significant figures for all of your numbers. And you just have to remember that this is times um, tenfold. So this would actually be 15.6. Either way, it's probably OK. So that's it. I hope that was useful and that you are able to make all the standard curves that you need to in the future.